Hello friends, today I want to show you how I drew and animated this cloud that I used in my latest entry to the 11 second club. Let's get to it. So I started off by building the cloud in its own project and scene. And I could have built this in the main scene that I used for the 11 second club entry. But where possible it's best to break down your animation into smaller shots or separate scenes. And the first thing I did in this scene was to create a vector level for my drawing guides. And I created drawing guides because I wanted my thought bubble to be animated. And I could have just drawn a static thought bubble, but I wanted to animate it to try and give it a little bit of life. So I drew three ovals, an inner one to draw the lines of each separate bubble up to, and then two outer ones that allowed each separate bubble to expand and contract to give the entire thought bubble more life. So I'd have separate bubbles going in and out and have them rotating around this oval shape. So once I had the guides, I created a Toons raster level and chose a pencil brush from the My Paint list in the raster tab. And this is the same pencil that I'm using for the rest of the animation so that the cloud fits in with the same look and feel. So then I simply started drawing each of the separate bubbles that form part of the thought bubble. So I started with the larger ones first, that are drawn from the inner oval guide up to the outer oval guide. And I wanted to use the pose to pose technique as I thought this would give a more consistent movement to each of the separate bubbles. So on the second frame I drew the ending position for these larger bubbles and I drew them from their smallest position from the inner oval guide to the middle oval guide and then simply moving the end drawing over and inserting a new drawing in between, I drew the in-between drawing where the bubble moves from the larger size towards the smaller. And there is simply a case of repeatedly doing this to add the in-betweens to show the bubbles moving around the oval as well as reducing in size and then increasing in size. So once I got the cycle complete for these bubbles, I went back to the first frame and then drew the bubbles in between. And by turning on the onion skin, I could use the first set of drawings as a guide for drawing this in-between set of bubbles. And this gave me a fairly decent movement of the bubbles around the guide, but they moved a bit too fast. So I simply put all these drawings onto twos and then in between again, in between those drawings. And although it was quite a lot of work compared to just drawing a static thought bubble, I really wanted to have the thought bubble animated and wanted it to move quite slowly but feel quite organic at the same time. So the time spent adding these extra in-between drawings was really helpful I think for that purpose. And I had also considered using the auto in-between option on the vector levels for either drawing the whole thought bubble moving or to use as a guide initially before tracing it over the top. But I think that would have felt too mechanical and I kind of wanted to have this hand-drawn feel to it. So once I got all of the movement working as I wanted to, I went back and made some final adjustments because I wanted each individual arc of the thought bubble to look like it was kind of bubbling. So as one arc got larger, it would start in front of the arcs to either side and then when it reduced in size, it would fall behind them and they would take over. So I went through the animation and just erased some of these extra lines to make them grow and reduce in size to give more of an organic feel to that bubbling effect that I was after. And then because I wanted to show some content inside the thought bubble, I coloured them in. And I chose a red colour just to get the initial colouring done, just so it was different to the white camera colour. And then at the end, I changed it back to white. And that was this scene completed with the thought bubble. So now I can use it in my other scene. So I loaded my animation for the 11 second club and loaded the thought bubble scene as a sub X sheet. I moved this column behind the characters so that where it overlapped it didn't cover the characters' faces. And then using the animate tool, I placed it in roughly the right place. And then selecting all the frames of this sub X sheet, I chose to repeat them from the edit cell numbers flyout in the context menu. And then chose the last frame of the animation. And then the cycle was repeated up to the end of the animation. So then I added a small animation to make the thought bubble appear to come from the character's head to sit at the top part of the screen. But I didn't want the bubble just to sit there rotating, I wanted it to move up and down like it was gently floating in the air. And because I wanted this floating movement to be a repeating animated action, it had to be in its own column. 
So I added a new vector level, and it could have been any level type, just to create a drawing in its own column. And then on the stage schematic, I connected this movement column to the thought bubble sub X sheet. And that means whatever animation I apply to the movement column, that'll also apply to the thought bubble column. And then also connected the bat column to the bubble column, so that moved at the same time. Which kept it in sync and makes the bat look like it's actually inside the bubble. And then I set two keys for this repeating action. One for the thought bubble at the highest peak. And one for the thought bubble at the lowest point. And then I copied the first key, which is the top height position, to appear after the bottom position. And then simply by pressing the button that comes directly after the last key on the column, this movement from top to bottom to top would be repeated through to the end of the animation. And then it was simply a matter of adjusting the timing so it moved as slow as I wanted it to. And then in the function editor, I adjusted the curve for those three keys using the speed in, speed out interpolation type to give it a smoother transition between the upper and lower points. And finally, I added a matte effect to matte in the bat to the bubble so that it would only be visible where the bubble was. So as the fluffy parts of the thought bubble moved around in a circle, the drawing would always remain inside the thought bubble. So by using the thought bubble column as the mat and the drawing as the source, I could then plug this into the output. And you'll see this more in the second bubble that I add that includes Batman because he'll be drawn past the edges of the thought bubble. And also later use a transparency effect to merge from the bat drawing to the person drawing. But if you'd like more details about how I use the effects here, then drop me a comment down below and I might create that video for next week. So finally, I just duplicated the thought bubble sub egg sheet column and did the same thing for the opposite thought bubble, along with more animation to move them from side to side as they battle. So that was it. <laughs> Using the combination of pose to pose hand drawn animation to draw the cloud bubbles rotating and moving in and out, and using the guide layer to keep the movement consistent, and using the animation tool to move it and make it floaty. And here I'd like to give thanks to all my lovely supporters on Patreon, with special thanks to Maria and to Robert. And if you'd like to see more of how I put together this month's entry, you can re-watch the live streams by following this link here. And these streams are run weekly, so please do come and join me on the next ones. In the meantime, here's another video that I think you'll find useful. And that's a guarantee.